Hello everyone and welcome back to V101 TV, a video podcast series dedicated to everything virtual. I am Tim Smith, at tsmith underscore co on Twitter, and today we're going to continue on our series on VMware. Today we're going to install the VCSA, vCenter Server Appliance, which is a Linux-based appliance for managing our VMware environment. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, since we have the ISO downloaded from VMware's site, let's go ahead and mount it. And we're going to open up the VCSA setup HTML file. You can see here it's going to try to load the client integration plugin, which I already have installed, so I'm going to go ahead and allow that. Now, if you don't have the client installation plugin installed, you'll find it here under the VCSA folder, and you'll see the executable there. Just go ahead and run it, restart your browser, pop back in. So we'll go ahead and click on install and of course make sure you read the end user agreement. Accept. So here is the IP address of one of our ESXi servers. This is not the IP address of the vCenter server that we're installing. So go ahead and enter in those credentials, root and your secret password. We'll go ahead and click next and we'll go ahead and accept the SSL thumbprint that we see there. Okay, so let's go ahead and give our appliance a name. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to call it VCSA. Give it a super secret password as well, just like our ESXi servers. And we'll go ahead and click on Next. And here we get to choose our deployment types. We're going to choose a single server deployment type here with an embedded platform services controller. You can see we have the option to split those roles out as well, um, which is what you'll do in larger environments. SSO domain, our single sign-on environment. This is our uh, master password here for administrator at vSphere.local. Um, you can customize that domain if you like. I like to stick with vSphere.local myself. And I'm going to name the site Lab. Deployment sizes, you can see here we have a couple options. Since this is my lab, I'm not going to have more than 10 hosts or 100 VMs. Tiny is for me. The data store we're going to deploy to, I only have one data store connected to my ESXi host, so we're going to choose our NFS storage, and we're going to click on Next. So we're going to go ahead and use the embedded Postgres SQL database. You can also use an external Oracle database, but this is a lab. Now we have our networking settings, so let's go ahead and give our VCSA a static IP address and a fully qualified domain name. Now make sure you already have this entry in DNS. You have to manually create an entry in a record in DNS for this host name. We'll assign our gateway DNS servers and we'll go ahead and assign an NTP. Again, network time is always important in your environment, whether it's uh, Active Directory, ESXi, simply just for logging as well. Active Directory has a couple more things why it's important. You can see here I already added in the A record on my DNS server on my Synology box. All right. Now that we've verified that's there, we'll go ahead and click on Next. And we'll go ahead and unselect to join the customer improvement experience. And we'll finish. And now what it's going to do is it's going to deploy an OVA file to your ESXi host. Um, once it gets that OVA deployed, it's going to go ahead and boot up into that uh, operating system, a Linux-based, and then it's going to deploy the um, install the VCSA or vCenter packages and apply your networking settings and uh, reboot. And we'll go ahead and speed things up now for this process. All right, installation is now complete, so we're going to open up the VCSA web client by clicking on the link, accepting the SSL certificate error, because we're using a self-signed certificate. And you can see here we have a warning from Firefox for Flash. Now, this is VCSA 6.0. 6.5 was released, which also includes an HTML5-based web client. But here we're still using the Flash-based web client. Let's go ahead and log in with our SSO administrator, administrator at vSphere.local, and our super secret password, and uh, log in. And here you can see we're presented with the web client that we are used to seeing uh, ever since 5.0 and above. We have our host and clusters, VMs and templates, and all of our settings, which we're going to go through on the next episode of V101. Thanks for watching.